Dang it. Anyway, good morning, or good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it is. It's Nate Jackson here, Criterion Collection Reviewer Guy, with 84. Good morning. Directed by Yasujiro Ozu. Man, nailed it. Yasujiro Ozu. Nailed it. Anyway. 1959, 93 minutes, Japanese. It's a, it's a classic. Well, it's not a classic. I don't know if this is, you could call this a classic, but... It should have been a classic. It's uh, one of those movies that if you're if you're in the know, then you're just that much better of a person. It's hilarious. It's it's bizarrely hilarious. It's, it's strikingly funny. Um, strikingly crude too. Um, basically, it's about these two boys. Well, there's two kind of subplots. There's it reads like a really bad like sitcom. Like you know how there's always a main plot. And then there's a subplot. Um, the the subplot is uh, revolves around like the parents of this like little Japanese village, and this one woman who like they think that this woman like stole this money from this club to buy herself a washing machine. When in reality, it turns out that her mother just had it and forgot to give it to them or something like that. But uh, but the main the main I, point of the film is a. Uh, these two brothers, whose names I forget, uh, Min Minuro and I forget the other one, Min, Min something or other, and these two little boys who are really addicted to TV and they they always sneak off, you know, and blow off their English lessons to go watch like sumo wrestling at their neighbor's house and their parents keep catching them until finally one time they like they they start bugging their parents like crazy to get themselves get them a TV. And their father scolds them and says they talk too much, and so they say, "We're not going to talk at all. We'll just we'll just stop talking." And so, apart from a few di dialogue lines to themselves, they they don't talk the rest of the film, more or less. In fact, they they blow off their teacher. Any adult that tries to talk to them, they just kind of just. And at one point, they you know, the teacher both their teachers ask them to bring their lunch money. And so there's this really weird, little hilarious, like, little moment where they try to play charades or charades, and uh, their sister, I think, I'm assuming their sister, like, tries to help them, help them out and try to figure out what they have to say, but to no avail. Um, until finally, I mean, toward the end, um, one of their neighbors gets a new job, like, selling appliances, and so they end up buying a TV, and they... All is well, and yeah, but they not before they end up running away and stealing food, and it's it's bizarre and it's it's very humorous. The little kid who plays the younger brother is adorable as hell. And I mean, he's just he starts he's just like he keeps he does a lot of like silent like even before before they do the silent treatment thing, he he's still very like a pantomiming like like, like yeah yeah you're another one you know like backing up his brother when he when he says stuff, but. Uh, but as far as the crude aspect of it goes, there's a really weird, like, running joke throughout the movie about, um, about farting. Like, there's, you know, at the beginning of the film, I didn't get it at the beginning. It took, it wasn't until the second time they did it when it snapped and I was like, wait a minute, this is, this was actually allowed on film as early as 1959? I mean, it was a long time before Blazing Saddles, you know, nailed the fart joke, you know, but... It's basically, basically they play this game where they touch each other on the forehead and then they pass, it like, it's like, it's like they, it's like the, I guess the Japanese equivalent of pull my finger, you know, where they touch each other on the head and then, you know, and it's like, it talks about like, I guess they eat pumice stones or something like that, or not, or some kind of stones and one of the, the other neighborhood kids' uncles can do it like, like clockwork and do it like every step he takes he farts so like every time and they're exercising every time he bends down <laughs> and the wife thinks that she's calling him every time she hears that sound like she's like did you call me <laughs> oh, it's just like i can't believe i was watching this um yeah it's 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 surprisingly funny and it it's charming it's cute and it's 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 a it's one that I I feel like 
it needs it needs a bit of remastering. It needs some reissuing with some maybe some bonus features. It, it's it's an awesome one. I I loved it. It was great. Um, I'm gonna give it an A minus. Give it an A minus. Just be, the minus just because the subplot was a little weak, and then there are certain aspects of the film that I didn't feel like they developed well enough. They could have like if they'd have spent more time with the kids, you know, and just like you know, I feel like they tried to do too many things in the film, or Ozu tried to do too many things in the film. And while he, you know, successfully completed the idea of you know the kids getting the TV in the end, it it still you know suffered from just certain you know giving care other characters a bit much, and I don't feel like it contributed to the plot, the main plot, which I'm assuming was about the boys. So apart from that, it's it's a brilliant. Apart from the little detours it makes, unsuccessful detours it makes, it's. I think it's brilliant. It's definitely a trip for 1959. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say. A minus. Good morning it deserves to be a good. Is good morning is a great morning. They should have called it great morning. By the way, just to explain the title, I I was wondering why it was called Good Morning. I mean, because that because I was trying trying desperately not to start this review with a Kanye West joke. For those of you who know. Um, but no, I, I'm so glad that I was able to attempt to try and for you guys. And I was so ready. But, oh, well. Let's stop being crude now. Anyway, um, yeah, but the title apparently refers to, is an interesting aspect. Um, the kids the kids stop talking partly because they think that it, you know, adults talk so much. Because they greet each other, good morning, fine day, and all that. Which is an interesting little thing to think about, you know, back then. I guess in Japan, like they're very, the Japanese are very courteous to their neighbor and so on, you know, saying good morning and good day all the time. And so they were just, they were just kind of sick of it. So interesting, interesting to bring that into the title. And it definitely, it's, it's a lasting effect. It gives the film a lasting effect. Like if they had just called it the TV set or, or the pumice stones or, it's not pumice stones. I forget what it is, but it maybe it is pumice stones anyway. But yeah, if they just called it like television or something, I'm just like, hey, let's just blow this off. Let's just, you know, hey, there's nothing to remember about that. But good morning, you know, and then to explain it in the film, just brilliant. A minus. It's on the wish list. I swear, this wish list is growing slowly but surely. I mean, we got the harder they come. You now variety lights, you know. And uh, maybe Pygmalion will be next. Pygmalion. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow is Pygmalion number 85. Um, yeah, we'll do that tomorrow afternoon. And then, uh, and then Alexander Nevsky is on its way. I have the terrible part two. I have yet to... Wait a minute. I'm missing one. I'm like, no, I'm not. Uh, I have the terrible part two. Number 88 is uh, hasn't come in yet. Um, I just, however, I just found out that both part one and part two are on YouTube, so if it comes to that, we'll watch them on there. And it looks like the subtitles are way better than, than friggin', um, Variety Lights, so it looks like the translation is way better than, it's not just like listening to sound, you know. It looks like somebody actually typed up translations for this film. So, yeah, that's awesome. And then, uh, I think Sisters is on its way, quite on, I think, Sisters of Quiet On, I think, are coming. Blob is here, of course. Fiend Without a Face. Black Narcissus. I think Fiend Without a Face is on its way. Black Narcissus, I'm not sure about. And, of course, I know where I'm going. And then I forget what's after that. Anyway, so we're moving along. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, don't eat don't eat pumice stones or stones or... Uh, God, I forget, he, he, he ends up substituting it for something, some bar lock or something, something I'd never heard of in the end. And, uh, it's hilarious. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't, don't go about, you know, being flatulent and stay away from TV. And we'll see you tomorrow for Pygmalion. And until then. Dang it. All right, screw it. Anyway, I'm not going to do it.